Okay, in the previous section, I talked about the um, the Carnot cycle and the principles of the Carnot cycle. Uh, in this section, I'm going to talk about thermodynamic temperature scale. Um, now, you might not have heard of this term, but you will definitely have heard of the temperature scale that I'm talking about, and I won't reveal it to the end. Um, we're also going to talk about how the Carnot efficiency can be derived from that and how that can be a bit more uh, related to engineering uh, problems. Okay, so firstly, what is a t thermodynamic temperature scale? Well, it's one that's independent of the substance substances used to measure the temperature. So what does that mean? So if you think about a classical uh, mercury thermometer, so that's dependent on the um, properties of the substance. So as the mercury um, absorbs heat from the environment, it expands, and we know uh, how much it expands by. So the graduations on the thermometer is related to the, the temperature of the mercury, and we read off the scale. So that's that's not a thermodynamic temperature scale, because it's dependent on the substances of mercury. Um, but we can develop a thermodynamic um, temperature scale using the Carnot cycles. Uh, basically, we do that by um, working off from the second Carnot principle, that if you remember that, that states that all the all reversible heat engines have the same efficiency when operating between the same two reservoirs. Now, because that's true, it means that um, this can be used to develop a thermodynamic temperature scale. The reason for that is, is if the the same two um, reversible heat engines have the same efficiency, then it's independent of the working fluid of those heat engines, okay, um, or even the cycle or type of the reversible um, heat engine. So the heat engine itself is um, is just dependent on the temperatures and not the working fluid. So we're just going to go through and um, derive that. So if we consider uh, the thermodynamic system, so um, we've got on the right. So we've got a high temperature reservoir, okay, and that's um, feeding effectively three heat engines. So on the on the left we have um, heat engine A, okay, and that's being um, supplied heat, and it's doing work A, and it's also rejecting heat uh, Q two. Now what we're going to do is we've daisy chained two um, heat engines together and so the heat from A is going into heat engine B. So that heat engine B is taking in um, uh, Q2. It is also doing some work and it's rejecting some of its heat, the remainder of its heat, Q3, to low temperature as well. Now on the right hand side we have um, uh, just one heat engine, heat engine C, and that's also receiving Q1 and also rejecting um, Q3 and um, doing, it's doing its own work uh, WC. Now you can see that if, if you were to draw a box around these two, th this heat engine C must take Q1, it must reject Q3 because it's operating at the same between the same reservoirs as A and B. And if you drew a box around A and B, a boundary like that, you'd see that that output must be the same, okay? So, we, if you um, recall that the, um, the thermal efficiency um, of a heat engine, we developed this expression, so look back at one of the earlier sections. So we said the thermal efficiency is equal to one minus the ratio of the, the heat out over the heat in. And we know that, um, the um, the heats is a function of temperature, but that we don't know what that function is for now, so we're just going to write it in a, a generalized sense. So <clears throat> the thermal efficiency is a function of uh, the two reservoirs, the temperature of the two reservoirs it's connected to, but we don't know what it is. So we also know that the um, the ratio of the heats is a um, function of the temperature be between um, what's going on and what's coming in. So if we apply that to each of our heat engines, so if we look at the um, heat, and then heat engine A, then the ratio of Q1 to Q2 is a function of T1 over T2, and the um, ratio of Q2 to Q3 is a function of T2 to 3, a uh, function of um, T2 and T3, okay? And then finally for the uh, heat engine C, that's a uh, function of the temperatures between 1 and 3, okay? But... We know that if we consider heat engine C, which has got a ratio between 1 and 3, then 
you could you can rewrite that sort of using some mathematics as this. So it's independent. This side is independent of Q two, and on here Q two um, the Q twos cancel. Okay, so we know then that the function of um, the, the temperature between um, one and three is also a function of the temperatures between one and two and two and three. So we've written here, but both sides are independent of Q2. There's no Q2 in here, and these two Q2s cancel. So this side is independent of Q2. Therefore, if um, both sides are independent of Q2, and uh, the right-hand side is a function of um, T1, T2, T3, and T, sorry, T2 and T3, then that function must take this following form, because um, for the t2s to cancel when you um, combine the functions okay so and notice that I've written you know this is still a function of temperature we don't know what it is so this is capital F so you can see that this function of um, t1 to t2 which is related to the heats this function has got to be in this form okay uh, for that to be true so therefore if we do substitute those into there we end up showing that the ratio of the um, heats for reversible heat engine mind, um, the ratio of the heat from the high reservoir to the low temperature reservoir is equal to the ratio of the, um, the hot temperature of the hot reservoir to the low temperature reservoir. Okay. And um, this, you probably heard this name before, formed the basis, it was the Kelvin temperature scale. And it was Lord Kelvin who first realised this, that a temperature scale could be developed uh, basically using Car Carnot's heat engines. And this scale is now um, independent of fluid properties because it's built up using heat engines and the heat engines, uh, reversible heat engines, and they're independent of the work of fluid. Then it truly is a, a thermodynamic temperature scale. Um, so when you plot the scale, it, the temperature starts at zero and it goes off to infinity and you can show that it's a linear line but for this um, temperature scale to be useful you need to you need to fix it you need to put a stake in the sand somewhere so what um, Lord Kelvin chose as the the marker was the triple point of water which is defined as 273.6 degrees Kelvin and Following on from that, he said that a Kelvin is one over that, uh, one over the interval between triple point and water. And so that's why one Kelvin is um, equal to one degree C. And, you know, we use this system now uh, in thermodynamics as the, um, the um, uh, <coughs> as a temperature scale. OK, so that was how we uh, Lord Kelvin developed thermodynamic temperature scale from um, the Carnot engines but relating that back to the Carnot efficiency so we said that the thermal efficiency is a function of the heat supplied but we also said that for reversible heat engine that um, uh, the ratio of the heats is equal to the ratio of the temperatures between the reservoirs so therefore we can basically plug this into that so now we've got our efficiency just in terms of temperature between uh, uh, the temperature of the low t high reservoir and temperature of high reservoir, which is um, you know quite an interesting result. Um, so you can see that if you want to increase the thermal efficiency, you can either decrease uh, the temperature of your low reservoir, which is quite hard to do because normally you're uh, um, rejecting to a the atmosphere or a river or the ocean or whatever. So that's normally quite fixed. But you can uh, obviously change the temperature um, of your high reservoir for your furnace, etc. And it should be noted that this is the highest efficiency that an engine can have. So coming back to what we said at, um, near the start of the lecture, that th even theoretically no heat engine can have an efficiency of 100%. But the highest efficiency that I, an engine can have is a function of the uh, two temperature reservoirs it's connected to. And it should be noted that these temperatures are absolute, okay? So we're using the, the, the Kelvin temperature scale. So just to illustrate that a bit further, so um, what you're seeing here is I've plotted the thermal, thermal efficiency 
for this heat engine, which is connected to a um, low temperature reservoir at 293 Kelvin. And as you increase the temperature, the uh, high temperature reservoir up here, you can see the thermal efficiencies increasing um, uh, with temperature. 